Hey y'all, welcome back. I've had a lot of questions about the deer shed and want no updates and different things. So I might have flew through the video a little quick last year. So I'm gonna reshoot, I'm gonna shoot this video and show you the upgrades. And just so we're on the same page, if you haven't watched the first episode, this here is my deer shed. It's actually on a 10 by 20. I'll scan and show you. It's on a 10 by 20 concrete pad. Uh, I got the, uh, I built this because I had two concrete pads here when I moved here. And they had metal buildings that was galvanized and rusted. And of course, uh, tore them down, it was just a concrete pad. Now I started in this little shed here. And that little shed's just insulated. Uh, matter of fact, it's a catch-all right now. That was an old plantation. It was an old smokehouse or a salt house on a plantation in Loudoun. And it got moved to two or three different places and ended up here, at least that's a story that I got told. But anyway, we'll jump in here and do a tour of the inside of the deer shed. Okay, I just wanna say this before we get going in here. You don't have to have all this stuff to process your deer. If you're tired of paying processors or you're tired, you wanna work up your own deer, really all you need is a cooler uh, to age your meat a little bit and you know get them skint down put it in a cooler put ice on it sprinkle a little rock salt drain your water off do that for three or four days and then get your meat out cleaned up and do your trimmings you also need to go get you a little food saver vacuum sealer or whatever uh, type vacuum sealer you want to get and just get you some way to grind your meat a small grinder a hand crank grinder whatever so if you've got a small vacuum sealer, you can do it with paper and tape, but it don't last as long. Paper and tape is about a year. Vacuum seal, two, three, four years, just according to what kind of good bags you get for four mil, five mil, for double sealed or whatever. But a cooler, a good knife, grinder, and a vacuum sealer, you can take care of all your own deer and do it yourself and have pride in doing what and know what you've got and you know what it's set for. You can make up your, for, stew meat, uh, spaghetti, whatever, steaks, round steaks, cube steak, whatever you want to do, you can do it. So you don't have to be as high, have the higher end stuff that we do. It took us years to gain this. It took us processing many years to get the equipment that we got. So just want to throw that out there for everybody. Okay. For the ones of you that haven't seen uh, the video I did last year about my process shed, uh, just a little background on me. Um, my nickname used to be Outlaw when we had CB handles. So that's kind of where the Outlaws Chop Shop originated from. I even have the stickers on uh, on my cooler. But uh, anyway, this is my uh, walk-in cooler. So it's the same as last year, but we do have an upgrade. There's, a, there's actually a deer in here too. But... Uh, I'll show you what we've uh, what we've done in here. So in here in the cooler, as you can see, it's it's going up now. I got the door open, but it's actually 40 well, it's 42 degrees, and the air conditioner thinks it's 60. That cool bot. If you ain't seen anything, you need to check that. I ain't seen my video. You need to check that out on the cool bot. But anyway, the upgrade that we did that last year that I did was this winch from Harbor Freight. It's a 110 winch. This thing is handy. It's got a little break if you go up too high. I had to adjust it a little bit. But uh, it's got your little remote just uh, up and down. I think it's a 500 pound winch, uh, 250. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of it and uh, put it right here in the video. But anyway, I bought this. This was under $100. And then I bought the trolley, which was almost as much as the winch, just a little bit less. But this actually can fit an eight, six inch I-beam, whatnot. But uh, anyway, I've got, I had an I-beam at work that I cut down. I made some metal brackets and bolted them to the studs through the wall on both ends. Tucked it right up against the ceiling, put the metal brackets on it, and then I butted it up with, uh, with some two by sixes bolted. It's real heavy duty. We had eight, eight or nine deer on this last year during muzzleloader, so. Uh, this was definitely a huge improvement. No more lifting. 
You can actually go to winch them down and set them outside or winch them in from outside. The pole's high enough to keep the buck's heads off the ground. So that's one of the upgrades for 2021. We love it. Now, I had mentioned in the video last year that I had a winch and I was using an old boat crank winch to, to pull the deer up here at the skinning station and uh, I ended up installing the, uh, the winch right, before, right during deer season last year. So what this is, this is a worn winch. It's a 110. Uh, took it on trade on a couple deer, but uh, it's got the remote up and down. I just put a, a regular nylon rope that was actually on the other uh, the other crank that I had. That has been really handy. Now I know that's overkill. I probably wouldn't have bought something that heavy duty to pick up deer, but like I said, it uh, it was given to me in trade for processing deer. But one of those 110 winches, like what's in there, would have been or hoist whatever would have been just fine here. I just had to make brackets like I did for this. But it still goes up to the uh, y'all know I put an 8 foot or a, a 8 inch wide beam all across when I built this that I bought goes all the way through it. So uh, got me a pulley system up there with my gamble hooks. So that was upgrade number 2. Uh, number 3 I guess if you've watched the video you noticed that we have added metal all the way around the walls except for the back wall where the sink is and the wall here that all we do is weigh on. So anywhere there's a chance that there could be meat get on the wall, I've added the metal. And the reason being is because with OSB, any amount of water, meat, silver skin, whatever sticks to it, it dries, or you could rot the wood out. So this was definitely a big upgrade. Uh, now we can just spray it off with a water hose and be done. So just trying to be a little bit more sanitary. Uh, and I'll get to the last improvement. This right here, this dehydrator, is by far a lifesaver. I had, uh, if you remember my last one, last video, I had a Gander Mountain dehydrator. It was phenomenal. It lasted for four or five seasons, and we do a lot of jerky. A lot of jerky. But it finally gave up the ghost. It was finally to the point there was no repair. It had some rust stuff in it. And I do a lot of wet marinade style jerky. I just like it better than do a dry, round, squirt through a gun jerky. I like this better. I like them both, but I like this better, uh, my style. And I, I also just released a video on how I make outlaw jerky, my jerky. So uh, anyway, a few things about this. One of the things I really like, this thing preheats up just like an oven. So I set my, you just go through and set your temperature. It brings up to set temp. I'll bring it a little closer so you can see. So you just push the... The button in to set temp. Okay, that's where I want it. Push, push it again. It shows that it's 75 degrees in here. That's actual temperature. Then it has set your time. So you can set it for whatever. Uh, I'm going to go 12 hours is where I normally run mine at 130 degrees. Click it again. Set your minutes. And when you hit it, it shows time remaining preheat so it's going to bring this up to 130 degrees before it starts its countdown down so it's 77 actual temperature 13 is what uh, or uh, 130 degrees is what it wants and we're still at 12 hours it will not let that counter start until it's preheated within 10 5 to 10 degrees I can't remember which one it was of what it needs to be now it's got the little lights. You can see I just pulled a jerky batch out. I've got wax paper in the bottom. But uh, this is a really, and it still runs when you open the door. The other one didn't do that. But this one reads in Celsius, Fahrenheit, whatever. 
ever how you want to do it. Now, with me with my wet jerky, I always put the wax paper down. Like, I, I'll change this wax paper back out because I done run one batch. I just got it out a minute ago. I have all my trays over here. But one difference that I did see between it and the Gander Mountain, the Gander Mountain, I could only do half the trays. So if it took 12 trays, I could only do six or it'd never get done. What I love about this one, I could completely do the hindquarters of two deer or whatever, have all kind of meat, put it on all 12 racks, and this thing will get it done because of the preheat, uh, the smart technology, or smart heat technology is what they say. But if I had the choice of the two, there was only $75 difference in the two, I would go with this time and time again. And I'm actually thinking about going and buying the full-size cabinet because this one pretty much paid for itself last year. Uh, the people that brought me deer, that wanted me to jerky, I charge extra to, for the ingredients, for the time, for the electricity. So I would just about say between people bringing me deer and us doing their jerky, it paid for itself. So I might consider getting another one in 2022. Maybe I'll do another video. But anyway, that was a huge upgrade. Did a little bit of redesigning. Uh, cooler still the same. Still running the, the cool bot. I am going to upgrade to a bigger water heater. So I'm still running. There's actually some bear meat in the sink. So, but uh, I, as soon as I get the bear meat done, I've got to wash up a few utensils. But I'm still running the rud water heater. Still, it's just a. I think it's a 10 gallon. Very small. I'm going to up it to 30. That might even be an 8 gallon. But it don't hold hot water long, but it gives us hot water for what we need. Uh, still running the single stainless sink. I was going to upgrade to three, but I just don't have the room, and that's more than efficient. And one thing I like about that having one sink is you can concentrate on the deer that you're working on. We have quit doing it for the public because with YouTube, travel and hunts, editing, and all the stuff it's brought, we really don't have time to do a lot of deer. We're doing a few, but only select few deer, but... Anyway, that's first station after the skinning. Uh, I've upgraded to a Rural King board. They've got these for like $55. Awesome boards. I've actually got some screws in there to hold it. Uh, we've got stainless back on our course supplies in here. Still running the old faithful Hobart. That thing is a champ. Uh, need to sharpen a blade on it, but other than that, it still works. Still running the Northern Grinder. Uh, well, I left my 22 in here, but uh, my Northern Grinder, uh, it's a champ. I would recommend that to anybody. Cooler hasn't changed. Did add another table this year. I uh, have two sets of scales, too, by the way. Got my regulars to do meat on, anything big on that one. And still running the Cabela's commercial vacuum sealers those are just them cabela's cg 15 vacuum sealers are the ticket i don't know if the new cabela's are as good as these but i can promise you these here are well worth the money and they're the same thing as the western pro but about 150 dollars 200 dollars cheaper and uh did a little bit of a uh, change around these few new signs this year uh got some pictures of different people that's uh, autographed things for me I've uh, got a, one of my older flags from the yard. Of course, the new Piney Life. Don't tread on me. That's an older flag that uh, I've replaced them with new ones. A um, couple older. That's the Outlaw Cooler, my old Outlaw's emblem. Um, of course, that's a couple of deers I killed a long time ago. Uh, real tree banner. A couple more little signs. And then the deer heads for my cousins and stuff. And then a lot of those deer heads in the back are just... Uh, the horns are just deer that I killed in the past. But anyway, uh, I've had some people on Instagram. I had different people ask me questions about wanting me to be a little more specific about what I use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just list in the description the vacuum cells I use, a uh, set of scales similar to what I use. Uh, I'll even put my scales that I have here to weigh my deer with. I'll put the winch, the Harbor Freight. I'll just give you a little bit of description of some of the stuff that I use, the necessity that it takes to make this shop function. Uh, this thing is paid for itself time and time again. 
and hopefully it'll be here for many years after I'm gone for my kids, if they pick up the butcher part of it. But anyway, I hope that I answered the questions that people wanted. Hopefully you get something out of the video, the description. I've got a video that shows you how I process them. I've had a lot of people seem to not agree with me, and I've had people that love it. That's the way I do it. I've been doing it for years, and everybody that's eat our deer meat says that it don't taste like wild game. So everybody's got a different opinion. But this is the way I do it, and I've never had somebody argue with me that's picked up a deer for me. So hope you got something out of the video. Let me know what you think. If you got any questions, drop in the comment below. Hit me up on social media, whatever. I'll do my best when I get time to answer each and every one of you. Thank you for the support. It looks like we're hitting right at 3,000, should be, here pretty soon. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate it, and we hope we keep bringing in good videos to you, entertaining videos to you, and hopefully you get something out of this channel. If you haven't, please subscribe and like, and as always, God bless. We'll catch you on the next video. We'll see you.